what do you care about? You care about your health? You care about your development as an athlete, not as a tennis player? Or you care about your ranking? Because if you care about your ranking, keep going. But they don't come to me and tell me, hey, you know, I have a problem here in the shoulder. And the doctor, this is nice, nice one. The doctor told me that I should stretch. Oh, that's great. So you have to wait to go to the doctor. Well, first you have to wait to have an injury. Then you go to the doctor, and the doctor tells you the solution. Brilliant. And the solution is you have to stretch. And you come to me, and I was the one who was like, hey, guys, we need to stretch. We need to stretch more. We need to do our homework at home. You know, and stretching at home before we go to bed, like 20 minutes, 10 minutes. It's not too much, but if you do it every day, it's like a homework. You improve. And you don't do it. Well, but then the doctor is telling you, you have to stretch. And they give you a program, and you follow that program. So, what is my job? Again, I'm not the babysitter here. I'm sorry. If you want a babysitter, you hire a babysitter, but not me. So, this is an example. So, you encourage athletes to improve because, oh, okay, the girls in level 18, the next time I'm sure that they will get in level 19. I'm sure. Because they're all the time hanging around. Hey, what was your record? Oh, 250. I'm going to beat you. And then it's uh, 140. Oh, come on. And the next time, they will improve or they will try to improve. That's good. Uh, to maintain this... Uh, Progression to maintain them responsible and you responsible about the, their progression. You, you will re, you will receive the report. Not only the coaches, you will also receive the report, and you will have an explanation here. And the coach will help you to to understand if you don't understand it. But it will be very simple. But okay. What about this? It's like the homework. <laughs> what about this? Huh? Are you working on this? Because here he says that you have a very very uh, big problem on the external rotator so you need to improve uh, the strength are you doing your homework are you doing your uh, therapy exercises every day in a proper way or not so it involves you also in the in the in the project identify analyze the potential talent from a physical point of view of the of the of the athlete and how we can mix it how we can mix it because uh, here I, I give the same example uh, always. It's about endurance. I'm not the typical guy who's, uh, uh, who tells the kids uh, to go to run. Okay, if I have uh, endurance runners, athletes, yeah, I will tell them to run. But a tennis player, I don't see a tennis player running laps around the court during competition, right? They don't do that. There was a nice sentence for an all-black uh, rugby player is in the books of uh, training science and it, it says something like um, you know we used to warm up we used to warm up running around the pitch for 13 laps I don't remember if I ever run more than 50 or 60 meters straight in my whole life playing rugby and he didn't understand why, for the warm-up, he had to do that. So, um, if you run on the court, just run on the court. <coughs> There's a lot of ways to get to the same uh, goal in terms of endurance and in terms of a specific endurance. And we will have a workshop and I will, uh, I will uh, give a lot of examples about that. Mm -hmm. But this is, for example, uh, <coughs> so the structure will be like uh, two or plus two uh, annual phases, <coughs> February, uh, February, April, and there are two more. Uh, September, two group, yeah. September. So, uh, okay. So <coughs> supervisors, we are the supervisors. Well, let's say we have to call ourselves like supervisor. Okay, I'm the supervisor. Yes, I'm the guilty one here. Uh, Another responsible people, uh, Marcel from Magnat, uh, coaches team from here, Luis was um, my main guy these uh, few days. He was a, 
on my side all the time. He learned all the protocols. And now I, I'm sure that if I go and I leave in the material, he's able to conduct the testing, no problem. I, I trust him 100%. So location here, we started here. Uh, number of players. Now we can say that after two days, we tested already the complete fit, uh, testing battery, 21 players in two days, which is not bad. Uh, seven incomplete because uh, someone, uh, some, some of them they were coming and just doing some tests. Some of them they were like injured or coming from injury. Some of them they were sick and so they were able just to do some of the tests. So seven incomplete. So it's a good number for just two days, I would say. Uh, materials. Uh, I brought some materials. Uh, of course, you as a parent are uh, invited to, to see the test the next time we are here. You can show around and sit down and take a look and make questions and, and stay like this and give your opinion and make all the questions you want. I would be happy to answer. But don't worry, if I have to tell you, from, could you shut up for a minute? I will tell you. <laughs> so, <laughs> I would explain you. You know, I'm the guy who talks a lot, but uh, we need also the, the, the environment for a good testing. So here you are, some pictures. You can find pictures on the web page already about on Facebook about the test we did already a uh, couple of good tests and we get results so in the next uh, couple of weeks we will have the report what is that so you will receive something like that okay these are the reports we are doing in Spain so imagine from here I finish tomorrow on Friday morning I travel to Sevilla we have a third stage because we started this similar uh, testing program in Spain after oh, 10 years almost we were planning that, finally, we are able to do that. So, yeah, in Spain, we don't have a program. We don't. But now, there's no more Rafa Nadal. Rafa is there, but there's no one in the back. There's no good player who's like, okay, he's so, such a talented player. There are good players coming, but won't be another Rafa. So, now we have a problem. And the solutions are coming now, late, but at least are coming. At least are coming. So we are testing in, uh, during the weekend. This is a complete weekend, so it's uh, slightly, slightly different uh, because we, uh, we bring the kids to a center from different regions from the country in four different stages. Uh, this is the south, and it's around 30 to 40 players, under 12 and under 14, because this is our main target. Okay, we also test juniors and pro players. But the main target is to see what is going on with the young players and to see this development program, to follow them for a long time, hopefully. So uh, here you will have the individual, the tests, the individual results, individual results. Uh, in terms of uh, biological age, as I told you earlier, you will have here the age at peak high velocity. That means uh, <coughs> this girl, she was at the time of the testing, she was 12.1, and we detected that she, in four months, around four or five months, she will get her peak high velocity. So we can detect more or less precise when she's going to turn into an uh, adolescent already. Uh, results from the testing and here the average of the age group and sex group so players of the same age same gender and in percentage the differences so here in a graphic to see it like in a picture here in blue you see a blue line this is the average and in red you see where is the player from a physical point of view physical test and then we go back to the injury and injury risk. So we have two more different uh, spider. So we divided this into the dominant side and the non-dominant side, if it's right or left. And the most interesting thing here for you, not to the numbers, okay, maybe the graphic to understand, but there's an explanation also in the report. Uh, it's here. So when we type the data here, automatically we get a couple of uh, equations and calculations and automatically comes with the next file we have the injury risk so we can estimate the injury risk of the player so we give colors red is high 
uh, green is low and yellow is medium. So automatically I see here it's red. Oh, something's wrong. I go here and I see that the grip strength, there is a huge difference already between the dominant and then the non-dominant side. This girl, she's 12 years old and she's already 15.4% stronger in the dominant side than the non-dominant side. So we have a problem already. If we go back here, we see that rotation in the shoulder, which is the, probably the most important uh, movement in, the, in tennis, of course, with no doubt, <laughs> rotation, because we use it for serve and we use it for the forehand. And around 70 to 80 percent of the strokes in tennis are serve and forehand. So we see that she's already, in terms of uh, strength, dominant, non dominant side here, 20 percent, almost 21 percent stronger here than here. What happened? <coughs> if I'm 20 percent stronger here, I will have more muscles here. More muscles here means that my shoulder is going forward. If my shoulder is going forward, my shoulders are like this. If my shoulders are like this, my position is completely wrong with the racket. If my shoulders are going forward, when I want to play a forehand, I will run like this. Instead of run like this. If with this simple explanation, you will think, oh, maybe we have a problem. But you normally don't pay attention to that, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, this is not, you, you pay attention to the result. Oh, you lost 6-1, 6-2. You're so bad. <laughs> You're so bad, I'm so bad, I don't know how to play the forehand. I don't really care about your forehand, really. If I see it, I don't care if you're number one or 10 or 2,000. I identify a problem and I would like to help to solve the problem and help the coach and the, uh, the kid. Because she's, again, she's 12. She's 12. Don't forget the picture. She's 12. We're, I'm not showing you like a uh, Fed Cup or Davis Cup results. <coughs> I could, but I don't, I'm not showing you. It's a 12 year old girl with already 20% differences, 20%, 90.8, 16.6 in the hips. Here, hips. Hip strength, 16.6% differences between one hip and the other. A result. Maybe she won't get an injury, maybe, but she has everything. Okay, I know how to cook, more or less. So I know the ingredients. So maybe I will have a good meal, maybe I won't, but you have the ingredients. It's Maybe you won't have an injury, but you have the ingredients to have an injury. So, uh, it's not only about this, we can compare players, same team, same year, same gender, same sex, same group, same group, so, but completely different in terms of physical development. So, what should we do? Should we do the same with both players? They are completely different. No. I must individualize the training, and there's no excuse for that. There is no excuse for that. Again, same age, same training. We go back to this example because it's a good one. So this is more or less, once we get numbers, once we get numbers, hopefully in the future, because now it's difficult to compare players because uh, we don't have numbers yet. But, and to compare <coughs> players, we would need like uh, a minimum of 30 to 50 uh, players per age group, per gender, per sex, so boys and girls. We would be able to create all these, all these uh, graphics, all these comparisons. We would be able to create like profiles. Okay, where is Carter? Because, okay, he should, he's a number one, so he should, he's supposed to be the, the one I should follow. But hey, don't forget, Carter has his own limitations already. So don't worry, we are working on them. So I'm not care about. Okay, he was number one. He's number seven. He's whatever. I'm I'm worried about his shoulder, I'm worried about his hip, I'm worried about other things. More than ranking. So we could establish like percentiles to facilitate, okay, the parents and the kids, oh, where I am? Oh, I'm percentile 60. Oh, 
okay, I could improve 40 more. So I could be in the 90. I could be in the 90. Oh, I'm in the 10. Oh, I need to work hard. I need to work hard. So it's a good way to give a good feedback and, and to compare players. This is all already, we already did this in Germany. I can tell you that in Germany, they, they've been following the same program for the last seven years. Seven years. <coughs> so they have already so many numbers. So they can compare players and they, they can see the evolution of, a, of an under 12. And now he's 18. And they can see his physical results for six, seven years in a row. So they can see how he evolved and how the national players are changing, how the regional players are changing, and give more information, which is uh, really interesting. So uh, in the future, or well, the future is that we could create a network in which we could share information. So I could compare the Norwegian players with the Spanish players. It was funny because one, one coach, he was uh, uh, coming from the Winter Cup, and he was telling me, oh, there are so many differences between the Czechs and the Spanish players and the, oh, they look so so adult they are like uh, so tall so big and I was saying honestly from a biological point of view there are no differences we've been testing that there are no differences among European countries in terms of biological development all the kids they are developing at the same ages of course if you have an under 14 and you train him and you're training like a pro, he will be better. Yes, of course. But you will jump over five stages. So what do you want? You want a good winter cup team? Or you want a average winter cup team, but then good players in the future? This is because if I analyze the checks, because I've been there, and I analyze the Spanish players, I am there. So I know what they do. And most of the time they do such a huge amount of volume and such a huge amount of training. They train exclusively and they leave exclusively for tennis. It's a seven day, four hours per day job. Nothing more. They don't study. Or they study distance study, they do it online. But just, they just care since they are really young about tennis. Ten, ten, ten. If you ask about my opinion, this is not the way. Of course, they can be successful at, at uh, early ages, yeah, but okay. If you want a, a Norwegian Winter Cup uh, uh, champion, no problem. We can do it. Just uh, give me the players. We can train five hours per day. Forget about study. Uh, we train. We, we train hard. We train hard. I will tell you that in two years, in one year, you won't, you won't see any difference. You won't see any difference between the Czechs and the Norwegians. They will be like this, they will be big, they will be strong, they will be resistant, yeah, and they will be good players. Yes, of course, you can do it. But I would prefer the long-term project. I would prefer that. 